several videos on this channel about RAM, covering its importance and how it affects gameplay performance. But by and large, we've mostly talked about system RAM that gets installed directly into the motherboard's DIMM slots. The CPU uses this RAM to store a ton of important data that it can access virtually instantly to ensure the system works smoothly and without any hiccups. Since this type of RAM is purchased separately, it's only natural that it's garnered more attention from us. There are many things you should keep in mind when shopping for system RAM, and you can learn about all of them through the links in the description that'll lead you to those videos we've mentioned. But there is another type of RAM, the RAM used directly by the GPU, better known as VRAM. This RAM isn't purchased separately, however. Instead, it comes in the form of a memory chip located on the PCB itself. Nevertheless, there are more types of VRAM in use today than types of system RAM. Barring any severely outdated builds, nowadays all PCs use DDR4 system RAM. Conversely, VRAM is available in 5 flavors, GDDR5, GDDR5X, GDDR6, HBM, and HBM.2. These types of VRAM weren't a discussion of their own if only to clear up any misunderstandings that prospective buyers may have about them when deciding which graphics card they should buy. So without any further ado, let's begin. We'll start with GDDR memory as it's by far the most popular of the two groups of VRAM we've listed. The abbreviation GDDRSD RAM stands for Graphics Double Data Rate Synchronous Dynamic Random Access Memory. It's quite a mouthful, so thankfully users don't need to commit it to memory. Knowing just the abbreviation is really enough. All in all, this is a type of DDRSD RAM, just like the DDR4 used for system RAM but specialized for carrying out graphics related tasks in tandem with the GPU. This technology has gone through several iterations over the past, but the ones still in popular use today are GDDR5, GDDR5X, and GDDR6. GDDR5 has been the dominant type of VRAM throughout the last decade. The majority of graphics cards made after the year 2010 have utilized this type of VRAM. In 2016, GDDR5 got an upgrade in the form of the modified GDDR5X, which allowed for far greater bandwidth. Despite its technical superiority, only a few Pascal-based GPUs ever got GDDR5X memory. This isn't likely to change either since GDDR6 was released not too long after that. This latest VRAM technology is the one that's being implemented in most of Nvidia's Turing-based GPUs as well as in AMD's RDNA GPUs. Now then, what are the main differences between these three types of VRAM? Basically, it all comes down to two things speed and power efficiency. Needless to say, newer technologies are both faster and more power efficient than their predecessors. GDDR5 has a transfer speed of around 40 to 64 gigabytes per second. GDDR5X is almost twice as fast, with speeds between 80 and 112 gigabytes per second. And finally, there's GDDR6, which pushes the envelope a bit further with its 112 to 128 gigabytes per second. But as we've said a thousand times before, on-paper specifications don't really mean anything. Looking at the on-screen specs, GDDR6 is more than twice as fast as GDDR5, which sounds incredible, but doesn't actually make that much of a difference as far as gameplay performance is concerned. Now this would normally be difficult to benchmark, since VRAM is built in and cannot be changed or replaced. Luckily, Nvidia has recently started equipping the GTX 1650 GPU with the GDDR6 memory, as opposed to the GDDR5 memory that it initially got at the time of its release. This means that we're able to test out a single GPU that's running on both GDDR5 and GDDR6. And the results are underwhelming, to say the least. The GTX 1650 was an incredibly disappointing GPU at the time of its release, and while the new VRAM does give it a slight FPS boost, that's all it is, a slight FPS boost. It varies from game to game, but it generally hovers around 5 additional frames per second. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, but never by a lot. Granted, even a slightly increased FPS count is better than no FPS increase whatsoever, but the point here was to show that on-screen specifications can be very misleading. The GPU's processing power is responsible for the performance discrepancies we see among various models. 
The type of VRAM only complements this slightly. Thankfully, this isn't a huge issue since VRAM is built into the graphics card and cannot be sold independently. And since all graphics cards will be using GDDR6 moving forward, this isn't really something that'll ever be relevant. Barring any special cases like what's happened with the GTX 1650. But even if that weren't the case, you now know that the type of VRAM does not affect the FPS in any major way. A GTX 1650 will never outperform last-gen high-end graphics cards, GDDR6 or no GDDR6. Our assumption when making this video was that most of you have at least heard of DDDR or GDDR RAM since it's unequivocally the most common type of RAM used with gaming PCs. However, there is another type of VRAM out there that's based on a wholly different technology, HBM. This abbreviation stands for High Bandwidth Memory. These three words should be enough to explain HBM's whole shtick. It's got a higher bandwidth. HBM takes up less space on the PCB, uses less power, and provides more bandwidth. This is all achieved by stacking multiple DRAM dies on top of each other on the PCB. Up to 8 dies can be stacked this way. The first thing you'll notice is that HBM memory has an enormous memory bus, starting at 1024 bits per stack. The more stacks there are, the wider the memory bus will be. Most HBM equipped GPUs that have been released so far have either a 2048 bit or a 4096 bit memory bus. This puts even the RTX 2080 Ti's 352 bit memory bus to shame, and most GDDR equipped GPUs go much lower than that, with many featuring only a 128 bit bus. And what about the bandwidth we've already mentioned? HBM starts at 128 gigabytes per second, and HBM2 takes this all the way up to 256 gigabytes per second. And HBM2E features a whopping 460 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. We haven't mentioned HBM2E until now because there are, as of yet, no GPUs that utilize this new technology. Still, it's nothing if not effective for eliciting that awe factor. And even though, in practice, the actual bandwidth varies from GPU to GPU, HBM can reach insane heights. Now only one question remains. How does all of this impact gaming? And once again, the answer is that it doesn't. Raw hardware power is great and all, but game developers want to make their games playable. Naturally, this means that they optimize their games to be playable on mainstream hardware. And since there's nothing mainstream about a bandwidth this high, most of its potential simply goes unused. For example, in a benchmark pitting the NVIDIA Titan V that uses HBM2 memory and the NVIDIA Titan RTX that uses HDDR6, the Titan RTX pulled ahead by about 5 to 10 FPS in most games. Meanwhile, the Titan V outperformed the GDDR5X Titan XP by about the same margin. The only thing is, the Titan V is the most expensive graphics card of the three, even though it's not the most recent, coming in at $3,000. For reference, the Titan RTX costs $2,500, and the Titan XP costs $1,200. It's important to point out that the type of memory used is not the only difference between these three graphics cards. Once again, the performance discrepancies can mostly be attributed to the advancements in GPU architectures. Unfortunately, there was no GTX 1650 situation where one GPU was offered in two VRAM varieties. So we'll just have to make do with this. If games were optimized to take full advantage of this much bandwidth, the results would tell a different story. But they're not, and they won't be. So if you need a PC strictly for gaming, it's best to stick to standard GDDR memory as it's much more cost efficient. HBM memory is best used in workstations and with memory intensive software. And that about does it for this video. In summation, GDDR6 is the fastest type of specialized GDDR memory that all the newest gaming GPUs use. It offers twice the bandwidth of GDDR5, but this doesn't impact in-game performance as much as you think. 
you certainly won't get twice as many frames per second, far from it actually. As for HBM memory, it has a much higher bandwidth, but the benefits this has on actual gameplay are very limited. Add to this the higher manufacturing cost, and it becomes clear that this is not a memory type intended for gamers. As we've said, the choice of which type of VRAM to pick isn't really a problem that plagues PC builders, since there's usually no choice to be made. VRAM is built in, and we have no say in that matter. But if you've ever been curious about how the new GDDR6 memory stacks up against GDDR5 or GDDR5X, how significant the generational leaps between them are and whether HBM is worth it, then this video should have answered all of your questions. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like, share, and comment if you did. It means a lot to us to hear that we've helped someone out. And if you want to see more videos like this one, definitely make sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to enable notifications so that YouTube doesn't sneak new videos past you. We upload a new video every week, so stay tuned for the next one. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.